Hello again and welcome to yet another perplexed parent stress student guide to AQA A-level English language. In this video I'm going to delve a little deeper into the requirements for paper 1 section A which is called texts, variations and representations. In this section your son or daughter is presented with two texts on a linked theme but from different time periods. And although it hasn't happened yet, it is possible that the text could be spoken language transcripts, but I'll cover how to approach these in a separate video. There are three parts to section A. Part one is an analysis of text A. Part two is an, an is an analysis of text B. And part three is a comparative analysis of the two texts together. The questions for both A and B the individual textual analysis asks for a discussion of how the writer uses language to create meanings and representations. And this is what this essentially means. Um, by the way, do pause at any point to give yourself time to read and process the information on the slide. It basically means what connotations might a reader take away from, um, the, from the language and the different interpretations they might make. And also, how is the writer using language to represent the subject um, themselves and or the implied reader? Section A carries 70 marks of the 100 marks available for paper one. And here are the three assessment objectives. And you can see that the greater proportion is taken up by the contextual factors, which I'll talk about shortly. OK, so there are six language levels that provide a framework for the textual analysis. To some extent, these could also be used to explore child language, language diversity and language change. As you can see, the greatest proportion of the content of your answer should be the lexical, semantic, grammatical, syntactical and pragmatic features. Of course, it's essential you provide some analysis of graphology and phonemic features if they're particularly noticeable examples, but don't write a whole analysis focused on these at the expense of the more important aspects. So when discussing the language features, the more precise, accurate and detailed you can be in your identification, the better. This after all is the terminology of the subject and the method you should be using. So this slide and the following one both contain some of the subject vocabulary uh, but it's by no means exhaustive, so if you have heard other terms, do use those as well. There's no way around it. These need to be learned, um, just like when you're studying a second language, French or German or Spanish. You just have to learn the language of the subject. Being able to describe the language features is a good start. Um, but it's only worth 10 of the marks. So it's also important to consider the pragmatics and the context and the rule of the language use. In this pyramid, I've arranged the context in what I believe to be the most to least important. And the size of the layers might act as a visual reminder for you of what should be discussed in most detail. Obviously, the purpose of the writing, be it persuasive, descriptive, entertaining, it's going to have the biggest influence. Why is the writer actually reading this? So we move up the pyramid and you should also discuss how the audience, who the piece is being written for, affects the language choices. The time period in which the piece was written will also have a big effect and also the genre and the technology. So the discourse is an extended piece of speech or writing and if we're not going to lose the thread of meaning when somebody produces an extended text, then we need some way to structure it. And this might be through the lexical choices and the semantic fields, through discourse markers at the start of paragraphs or sentences, um, how the thing is cohesive and hangs together. Are there common sentence structures? Are there common ways in which the audience is addressed? Is it in the mode in which the text appears? Is it in the tone? And the same is true of graphology. Um, you don't want to spend too much time on this, but they could all have some influence in helping to realise the content of the text through the form it appears in. There's also sound 